So there's a lot of books out there about how to get rich or how to become a millionaire, looking for some financial outcome. But what I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video are the actual five books that led to me becoming a millionaire by 26 following my side hustle. And I'm also gonna be sharing with you the top lessons from each of these books. That way, even if you don't end up buying them, you can still gain useful insights from them. And these books start off very basic for a complete beginner to finance who may not even have any extra money. So if you're literally paycheck to paycheck right now, and in a few years you're saying, I wanna become a millionaire, well, I was able to do this myself over the course of about six years, and a lot of it came from these books. So the very first one is called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson, and this is a very old book. But oftentimes, these books that are extremely old typically have better information than some of the stuff you have coming out today. And I actually wrote a book, so I'm kind of throwing shade at myself right now, but I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Some of these old books are gems. The biggest concept here is paying yourself first. What a lot of people do is they get their paycheck and they start paying the bills, they pay their mortgage, they pay for their groceries, and then if there was any money left over at the end of the week, maybe before their next payday, that is when they might set aside a little bit for retirement or these various things. This tells you to do the opposite of that. It says on payday, you pay yourself first, a percentage of your total income, whatever it is that week. And if you're saying I can't do this, what my response would be is to start with 1%. Because if you can't save 1% of your paycheck, I have nothing to say to you, honestly, because everybody can do it. 1% of $100 is a dollar. So if you're making $700 a week, we're talking about putting $7 into a separate bank account or separate place every single week. And then once you get used to that, you increase that percentage over time. And I do want to modernize this lesson here a bit because again, this book is very old, but if you were to automate things today with many of these automation tools for finance, you could automatically be setting aside a percentage of your paycheck every single week without even doing anything manually. And that is truthfully the very first pillar or step here uh, in this journey. Now there's a ton more lessons in that book. I would still recommend picking it up, but the main one is paying yourself first. But in order to really get somewhere and expand my visions on how to make money, I needed more than just, you know, setting aside money here and there. So this led me to another popular book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And it's pretty much what I call like the entrepreneurship Bible at this point in time. I mean, you really need to read it if you haven't. If you have, you know, great. And if you haven't in a long time, maybe reread it. It's one that I will often pick back up. But let me tell you my core takeaways now. And my number one takeaway from this book is that as a nine to fiver, you're not going to make money when you're not working. That's just going to be a problem. If it's not a problem now, it's going to become a problem later because life is expensive. It's getting more expensive and and things are just more uncertain every single day. Things are getting more uncertain in terms of job stability and all of that. So if you're only making money when you're sitting at a desk or doing something with your hands, whatever it may be, that is going to be potentially a problem. I mean, look, depending on where you're trying to go in life, maybe you can get by, but you need to figure out systems that allow you to make money without directly involving your time. And it might involve your time at first, but can you build things that make you money 24 seven, or can you buy things that make you money 24 seven because you know what to look for? Well, this is the money mindset that rich dad, poor dad begins to show you. Now there's tons of lessons in rich dad, poor dad. It also got me into real estate and I have since done three real estate transactions. So it's something where you're going to gain a lot of wisdom from it. But my number one takeaway from this is just needing to earn money 24 seven, 365. So for me, this led me into the content business of creating these online content resources, starting with YouTube, building into multiple blogs and other content mediums. And this enables me to monetize them and make money potentially 24 seven, because that is the time period when these resources can be accessed. And look guys, I'm not saying you should follow the same opportunity as me, because truth be told, if you're trying to become a millionaire and you follow what somebody did five, six years ago, it's very unlikely for you to follow that same path and become a millionaire because tons of other people have followed it and then there's just going to be less meat on the bone there for everybody. And distilling information from multiple different books is important because there's nothing you're ever gonna find from just one book out there 
that's going to be the ticket to bringing you where you need to get because if it was everyone would buy it everyone would exploit it and it wouldn't work anymore the next book is an interesting one because it's the book i needed back in 2017. the only problem was it hadn't been written yet or maybe it was in the process of being written and this book is atomic habits by james clear so in 2017 when i was figuring out what i wanted to do with entrepreneurship i had just gone full-time into my youtube channel and I was running into a lot of bad habits of mine. I was lazy, I was procrastinating, and running into all sorts of issues. And what I found is that when I was working a job with supervision and with a manager, it was easy for me to be in line and stay in line and do what I had to do because I had literal repercussions. I had people you know, watching me and making sure I was working. Well, as soon as I had the freedom, I found myself to be a bit more relaxed with things and maybe saying I'm going to take a walk before I start work today and that became a slippery slope pretty quick. Not necessarily taking a walk but just all of these little things and just getting too sucked into that freedom. So this book, Atomic Habits, is what could help you with getting rid of those old habits but not just getting rid of them, replacing them with different ones. Because if you want to become a millionaire, you, you have to become a whole ass different person than you are right now if you're broke or even if you're worth 100000 And that starts with habits. Habits are what lead to repetition and repetition over time leads to change. So you need to really get to the root of these habits. And for me, it was procrastination and, and a few others here where it would routinely disrupt my path that I was on. And what allowed me to become a millionaire was no big break. It wasn't like on a given day I had some major breakthrough. It was consistent action taken over long periods of time. And for me, that was one of the biggest takeaways of this book is the compounded value of these small actions that you're taking every single day and where that can ultimately lead you. So at this point, you understand the concept of needing to set aside money for a freedom fund or even just to have actual assets. You understand the need to be making money 24 seven if you want to build serious wealth. And we also now understand how our habits can really hold us back at times. And we need to replace those with the right habits that are going to propel us to where we're trying to get. But there's two more books on my list that are really going to, you know, make things a bit easier. Or at least it helped me on my path. So let's jump into that next one now. The next book is called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And I am lucky enough to have seen him speak before. And if you ever have the opportunity to, I would highly recommend it. So let me ask you if you've ever felt like this before. A lot of people are wanting to do something different. They want to get out of their nine to five. They want to pursue entrepreneurship only they don't know what opportunity to pursue. And if that is where you are at, let me tell you, my friend, you are not alone because that is how so many people feel. And if you're in that situation, what I recommend doing is finding your why. And this is something that my mentor actually helped me with when I was going through this process myself. I was exposing myself to new ideas, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad a few pages at a time, realizing I was on the wrong path. If I was trying to get to millionairehood, it would have taken me my entire life. I would have been an old man by the time I was a millionaire. And I said, I want to do it sooner. But then at that point, I was talking to my mentor and I said, what do I do with my life? What opportunity do I pursue? And that is when he said, you need to find your why. And that becomes your reason for being or why you are taking actions in the first place. So you don't want to just focus on becoming a millionaire. I want this outcome. Focusing on outcomes is not going to lead to happiness. Focusing on what your why is and solving problems on a larger scale and helping people and then having that outcome in exchange of the value that you have created now that leads to fulfillment. So how do you find your why? Well, that book really dials in on how you find this. And it is a book that is mostly about leadership. But the thing is, you're probably going to have to become a leader at some point if you want to scale your businesses. And that's going to be what we talk about next is the scaling. But just keep that in the back of your mind for now. You might be a solo operator for now. I was for a long time. And then there were points in time when I found myself leading a large team of, on the blog or over here, different groups. So just think about that you may need to go and learn these completely different skills that you don't even have now to get through these levels. So in order to become a millionaire, you need to A, have a really good solution to a problem, but you also need to B, have very strong conviction behind your solution. Because people have a nose for bullshit today. People can pick up on it 
And if you put something out there in the market, doesn't matter what it is, and you're not in it, if your heart's not in it, people can tell, absolutely. So that is why it is so important to understand why is this a problem that you're looking to solve so important to you or maybe somebody in your family or somebody that you know. And I honestly do recommend finding something that might be close to home for you in terms of this problem because this is going to be your driving force potentially for the next 5-10 years or even beyond that. That is ultimately what should put you on the path of, okay, this is the direction I want to go in. This is the problem I want to solve. You then take these ideas that you've learned in terms of automating your finances, setting money aside. Okay, I can set aside a freedom fund. I can accrue money to actually make that happen. You look at something like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and you say, okay, I need to make sure that this opportunity can pay me 24-7. If I'm only able to make money while I'm at a store or on the phone or whatever it may be, unless you're really, really passionate about whatever that problem is, that's probably not the right opportunity. And then if you find that needing to pursue whatever this is requires a lot of change in yourself, well, that is where a book like Atomic Habits comes in, where you can literally reprogram your brain. You can change yourself into a completely different person than who you are today. But here's the thing. You could find a problem out there that is something you're passionate about. You can find your why and have strong conviction. You can start solving that problem even after getting rid of your bad habits, even after learning about businesses and all of that rich dad, poor dad stuff, and even after learning about automating your finances. And despite all of that, you could still not become a millionaire. Why? What could that be holding you back? It's the very last book on my list, and it's called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And this book essentially breaks up a business into three different departments. And the interesting thing is, if you're a sole operator at the beginning, which most people are with a side hustle, you're doing all of these different operations on your own. So that's typically not a problem for most people, especially if you like entrepreneurship, because you're typically a jack of all trades and you're interested in all sorts of different things. However, when it comes to the point where you're actually trying to solve this problem on a larger level, help more people with it, whatever it may be, you're not going to be able to do all of those different things at scale. So this is where things get confusing for some people because some people think, okay, I just need to find a skill of my own that I can go bring out to the world and bring to the market and I can become a millionaire. It happens, sure, but it's not that common. What normally happens is you come up with a solution to a problem and then you need to provide that solution on a bigger scale. So for us, it was the content we were producing on the blogs. You know, if it was just me writing every single article, there would be a ceiling there and we wouldn't have been able to grow it the way we did. So instead, we had to figure out how to build systems, how to build departments. Okay, we need a team of freelancers over here and then we need the editors that sit over the top of that. So it goes from applying your brain to fixing the problem to, okay, let me now change over here and apply my brain towards creating systems that solve that problem. And in doing that, in making that shift, that is typically where you're going to see that 5x or that 10x on your income if you do this correctly. And look, there's going to be hurdles. There's going to be challenges throughout that, and you probably are going to make mistakes. However, you need to scale. You need to solve the problem on a bigger scale in order to generate serious wealth and provide a larger amount of value to people. Anyways, guys, this was a super casual video, nothing flashy. I have a book myself if you're interested. It's called From Side Hustle to Main Hustle to Millionaire. I do think it is a valuable book, but again, take um, you know time and look into it yourself and you know see if it would be a good fit for you, of course. Um, the books mentioned on this list are some of the most important books to me, and you can find most of them at your local library. You can also find my book at a lot of libraries, so um, feel free to check that out as well because it has been popping up in libraries, which is very cool. But I thank you guys for tuning in here. If you have any book recommendations yourself, leave me a comment down below, or if you have any thoughts about these books, let me know as well. Subscribe, hit the bell if you want or don't, and I hope to see you next time.